Club promoters are a great example, a corollary to what I'm saying. They have to get girls into a club. Their goal is not to have sex with them because there's money involved. And what happens inevitably, if you ask any club promoter, they're like, I have so many women that I'm just like pushing into the club and I'm not showing them interest that they always try to sleep with me. Well, this is one of my questions is about like your business. Yeah. So obviously, like when people like make businesses, they usually start it because they see a need or a service that needs to be fulfilled. Correct. But my question is like, is this something that like you wish you had when, when you were younger? This is the course that I wish I had 25 years ago when I was a DJ at a strip club. Yes. What do you is, feel like it would be different if you would have had that? Oh man, I would have. I would have gotten into audio books immediately. I would have. And, uh, I would have found mentors immediately. I would have started a scalable seven or eight figure business. I'd probably be like outrageously. Awesome. So, so what do you think makes people drawn to you to want them to pick um, you as a mentor? So, so I think I constantly show them and I don't talk about it. If that makes any sense. Like you, you, no, you, of course. So, you so, so my advertisements are always like me at these events and people reacting to me. I never touch, mm -hmm. you'll notice in my ads, I'm never touching women. They're always like mm -hmm. facing me, touching me. And I never promise, I never say date beautiful women. I say have high status networks, but I show guys and my clients are like, I have clients, I have one client who's like 4'11 and he's just like surrounded by hot women all the time. The other thing that really helped me a lot is I attack the tropes. And in the male, male self-help community, the tropes are I am brown, I am too short, I am fat, um, I am an African American and only likes to date white women, I am too broke, uh, I am too old, and I'm trying to think what the other so ones are. So just very limiting mindsets. Yes, for sure. And Ooh. so so I specifically what it all goes back to if you go to my testimonials, I specifically start with the Indian guy, the old guy, the fat guy, the like I go through each one of them. <laughs> Mm. And I and I very much attack mm. objections, and so I think that's one thing I did it. And the other thing is like I'm so vicious. Like I just left a two and a half hour podcast right or uh, show I did just before this. Oh, like shit. I'll say something like yeah blah blah blah, and then I connected with this guy, and then the next sentence is and I'm speaking at Ty Lopez's event this weekend or Tuesdays ago. Dan Balzerian, he's at his house and he just comes on my call. My clients are like holy fucking because they're comparing me to my my competition your network no. or well, well, your people well, you're around. But they're comparing me to my competition who will say things and not back it up. And in my case, I will say things and then back it up. Or I won't even say anything and back it up. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. So like for instance, I'll say, hey, I, I'll teach you guys uh, how to be a good leader, how to be a good networker, and to show up to a party with 70 girls. And then I'll, there's a video of me uh, at um, Wet Republic on August 25th, mm -hmm. and I showed up with 70 girls. It wasn't 69 or 68, mm -hmm. it was 70 girls, and there's a video of it. So when I say who, a thing, I do counted a thing. Them. It's a competition, so yeah. they we got to number 70. Yeah. yeah. Have you always been like that? I think, you know, the, the irony is probably my love of physics is the thing, and, and then mm. my time in the military, where it's like, okay, you have to have positive contact. Like I have to see a thing to believe the thing is real, even though I know it should be real. You take nothing for granted. Mm. And then the way it works, like the scientific method in um, in science, which basically I have a hypothesis and I keep trying to disprove my own hypothesis. I think that's what did it. And then the other thing was, you guys know those things you get on Instagram, those spam messages where you can buy 5,000 followers for a hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. No, right. You know, you guys hate them, but what yeah. are they? They're just- Robots words and they annoy the fuck out of you and they're words with emojis and when i send out invites i teach guys how to make invites and it's it's only one sentence would you like to come and five photos of girls having fun at a party mm -hmm. that's always my invites yeah and they, i noticed that and they fucking <laughs> Crush because it's visual. Yeah, people because want to see they visual do. Stuff. They, they do. So she, yeah, I just realized. Yeah, you got invited you to got, my thing. Yeah, so you've seen you it. So invite. it's just it's six photos for me at my birthday. It's six photos of me getting smashed in the face with a cake, yeah. and it's just nothing it looks but like fun. it's like nothing but supermodels like hitting be, me in the face I with a cake. Be there with and, hot and girls. It's very short. I don't say anything. It's like going to Hakkasan October fifth. Would you like to come? And the girl says yes, and that's it. It's more evidence, fewer words, and I think that's what. So for your less is more. Less is more. Where your for your birthday that's coming up with your your competition here. I was so. I was at Champs, uh -huh. and uh, Dan Dan showed up at his booth Ignite, which was right across yeah. from mine, and he actually had a line of probably like 30 girls. Yeah. And like I said, it was one of those things of playing, you know, we talk through the internet, that's it. Yeah. I walked right over to him, and I'm like, what's up, bro? I'm true. Yeah. And he's like, oh, what's up? And I'm like, I got a booth over here. He left the whole line of girls and came over and hung out in yeah. my booth. He didn't give sure. So I want to see you do that on your birthday, please. What do you mean? Just leave the whole line of girls and come oh, get I me. Oh, I do. So, so the, the, one of the problems is, so when, what, this is another thing. If you ever, get me in Spanky. If you throw an event like this, <laughs> one of the things you have to do is you have to take, the girls always come in first. I always tell the guys, you got to go in the back. Girls come in first, and then you put the girls up on the on the table, whatever mm -hmm. the thing is that you're doing. You take photos with just the girls, several photos with just the girls, then like one or two guys. Often there's so many girls at the table, I just don't even stand at the table. I'm like just standing by myself, letting the photographer get the photos. Because the photos and videos of the party, there's another thing in MOA. The photos and videos of the party are more important than the party. I don't drink. I don't do You're any right. drugs. The photos and videos of the party are more important than the party. If you want to do this, 
this whole socialization thing. Mm -hmm. The photos and videos of the experience that, are, more, are more important than the you. experience. Now, people who are like I'm over the age of 40 party. hate that, that I'm saying this, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the world we live in now. You need to be able to show people the evidence that you were able to do the thing you said you could do that automatically puts you in the top 10% because most people, you remember that normal distribution, the, the, the mm -hmm. thing that, that uh, outside of one standard deviation over there on mm -hmm. the right side, that's only 16%. That top 16% <laughs> of people, those are the people who tell the truth, who do the thing and say the mm -hmm. thing. Does that make sense? Listen, I know exactly what you're saying. I was on tour. I won't say, well, Cat Williams. We was on Cat yes. Williams tour. But it was a comedian that was with us that he's like an alternate. Yeah. So he would take pictures like before like the audience came. Yeah. Like, look, look where I'm at tonight. And, it, and he would get more like likes than we would. Yeah. We was on the show. Yeah. So that's just, I know exactly what you mean by that. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you got to show it. Yeah. If you don't show it, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. I was trying to explain this to Dr. David Buss, who's a, a, a professor of evolutionary psychology at UT Austin. And, and he, one of the things is he's in his 70s. And I was explaining to him, because he writes books on status or whatever. And I was explaining to him, like, the entire way of conferring and imbuing status is to co totally move to social media. There is nothing else. Even you consider the legitimacy of, like, say, Barack Obama. If you went to Barack Obama's Instagram page and he only had 100,000 followers, like, you would the think the there's fuck? something's wrong. Yeah. Exactly. Like, 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 literally, his legitimacy legitimacy as being famous is shown through social media. Mm -hmm. When you look at Instagram, like again, the most famous soccer player in the world is Cristiano Ronaldo. If you go and look, or, or uh, Lionel Messi, if you look, they should have hundreds of millions of followers on Instagram, and they do. If they didn't, it's not only that they would lose legitimacy, Instagram would lose legitimacy for not having them have hundreds of millions of followers. Does that make sense? Right. And so wow. in doing so, like it's like, like social media is literally a box that must mm -hmm. be checked to prove that you are famous. Right. Like right. nowadays. Right. And so these old these older evolutionary psychologists, like who I'm huge fans of, like Lita Cosmides and and uh, David Buss. So when you, say, when you say the David Buss and him being in his 70s, yes. I mean, has he has he transitioned? What does he think about what's going on right now? He talks about it a lot, but there's no way to study it because he he was going to say, hey, we should do a study basically on the concept of like how many followers a, a person has and how many women are attracted to him. And I explained to Dr. Buss, I was like, well, no, they're buying followers now, so there's no point in doing something like that. Mm. But it is it's just a really interesting concept because I was in, in evolutionary psychology. There's a concept called Two, two one. one of them is called sexy sons hypothesis or sexy sons theory and the other one's called mate choice copying and both of these things essentially mean mm. that women choose men that other women find attractive right exactly and most two gender species are like this you do this with macaques you can do this with uh, with ostriches you can do this with uh, lizards especially with any kind of rodent if you have one that is surrounded by women other women find them attractive well i can't make my clients taller and i can't make their eyes blue Right? But and you I, can get them to have but, more women around But I can get them, them to have yeah. more women around them by teaching them how to be friends with women, which is the cheat mm. code. So it starts off like you decide to be friends with 10 women, or well, two women, and those women have five friends each. Mm -hmm. Then you go out with 10 women, but you handle everything. You don't pay for it all, but you handle it all. You handle all the logistics or whatever. You pick them up, you take them out to the club, whatever. And then those 10 women introduce you to more women. Now you're out with a different group of 10 women, and then it's 20 women, and then it's 30. Then this is basically what club promoters do. Mm -hmm. Then at, by, the, by the, the club promoters are a great example, a corollary to what I'm saying. They have to get girls into a club and not have. They're not, their goal is not to have sex with them because there's money involved. And what happens inevitably, if you ask any club promoter, they're like, I have so many women that I'm just like pushing into the club and I'm not showing them interest that they always try to sleep with me. Mm -hmm. Because you're surrounded by women and you're not trying to sleep with them, so they always try to sleep with you. Bulzarian says this all the time. He's like, I never hit on the girls. They eventually like see, they understand. In order to keep my attention, they have to compete for my attention. Exactly. And so that's essentially what happens. But Dan is a great example of like, uh, he talks about fame as being the most important attraction indicator. Well, I can't make everyone famous, right? But the, and then then money is another thing. You can you can get rich. There's ways to get rich, especially mm -hmm. as a man right now. There's tons of ways you can become a copywriter, learn how to use ChatGPT, become a programmer, do. Uh, uh, Amazon FBA. There's tons of ways Drop to get, become wealthy. Dropshipping, yeah. exactly. There's tons of ways to become wealthy. You can do wholesaling, and there's lots of stuff. Did you say wholesaling? Ho wholesaling. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, wholesaling. Wholesaling was legal. Yeah, wholesaling. Both both wholesaling, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, but there's lots of ways for you to get wealthy. But I can, so I, I can maybe make you wealthy, but I can't make you taller. I can't change your eye color. I can't make you more aesthetically pleasing to look at, but what I can do is increase your pre-selection. That is something very easy to do. I can make you more charismatic. I can increase your pre-selection, and we can change your body fat percentage. Those are three things I can mm -hmm. definitely change and then maybe help you down the line with your wealth. Have you been helping Rolo? Rolo seemed like he was pretty fit last Rolo time. Rolo is there. jacked, and I may or may not have something to do I may or may not have something to do I may or may not. Mm. <laughs> you know the funny, you know the funny jacked, thing? So, so Rolo is very happily married, but like mm -hmm. it's funny because he is married. They know he's married. He never hits on the girls. They throw themselves at Rolo. 
They throw girls Who's throw Rolo? themselves at Rolo. Mm. Rolo they Tomas. throw themselves at Rolo. Like like and and he says he comes home back to Reno and his his wife throws herself at him because she's seeing her fifty five year old husband like surrounded by beautiful women who are attracted to him. And that's how that yeah. happens. So it's about like the double standards. Um, like you know how I've heard you say this before that it's totally okay for a man to have like multiple women around him or even like sleeping with the, uh, them sexually. Okay. But when a woman has multiple male partners, it's not like the she's same. A just, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of more frowned upon. Okay, so so, 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 so let, I mean, I think you already answered this one. I was like, how did you build yourself up to the man that you are today? The main realization was uh, there was two of them. One of them, I was working at a strip club, and I would see women come in there on a regular basis, and they would get like hit by their boyfriends or something, some kind of domestic uh, abuse. Yeah. Right. And I would mm -hmm. watch it, and remember, I'm 21, 22 years old at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm still very impressionable, and I still sort of, sort of believe in a, a Disney sort of like born again fairy version, tale, fairy tale kinda. version of the world, mm -hmm. where I'm supposed to be nice to really pretty girls, and they're gonna be nice to me back. And then I work in a strip club, and I'm quickly introduced to this. I, to me, these are the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. I'm right. Yeah. Just, it's a strip club in 1999. And, and, and by the oh way, Dallas gosh. has some of the best yes, strip clubs. Yes, this is in Austin. The world. This is Austin, Texas. Okay. And so I'm, I'm at yeah. uh, UT Austin, and there's some stunning women there. And this is, a, you know, there's a, still a dot com bubble, all this kind of stuff. And so I'm, I'm watching this. I'm like, man, these girls are beautiful, and I'm watching them get hit. Go, go back to their man, come back again. And I'm like, mm. okay, something's wrong here. And then I always remember that like the prettiest girl at the strip club I worked at, she was uh, she used to complain to me about the other DJs. Like, this guy's a piece of shit. Can't stand this guy. And she mm. would like sit on my lap and like flirt with me the whole time. And she's yeah, married. Kind of like Ben, too. So she, yeah. yeah. So then she left her husband. I was like, oh my God, you left her husband. Like, maybe I got a shot. And then she goes, and I'm moving in with the other DJ. And I was like, ah, oh, <gasps> something's broken here. Like, no, I'm uh, today I'm so happy that it happened. Of course. Like, mm. Something is broken in the system. Mm -hmm. Something that the church, my mom at Disney told me isn't true. And so that was the first realization. Oh, okay. And the second realization was um, in 06, my father was killed by a drunk driver. I was 29 years old. Mm. And when that happened, I six weeks later I get to send to the Middle East, and my girlfriend, she wasn't my girlfriend, but the girl I was seeing at the this time. This is you. I, yeah. This is yeah, true. Yeah, I really uh -huh. liked her. I really liked her a lot. And uh, she stops messaging me. I'm over in the Middle East, and then all of a sudden I see on on MySpace uh, her with a uh, shout uh, out to Tom. Yeah, shout Tom out to from I, MySpace. I actually know Tom. Anderson. Yeah, we used yeah. to Love hang him. out with him. We used yeah. to hang out together. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, I, I did a, a with ice bath. What's it called? The cold thing. Whatever. Oh, the, I, the ice lunch. Uh, the cold lunch. Hey, whatever. real quick, yeah. do you know they say that somebody said that when you do coke? And it's like what hits your dopamines for like, and they say for like nine minutes. Yeah. But they say when you do that ice bath, it's an hour and a half. Probably, same, yeah, same yeah, oh, for sure. Bet. So the thing is, what happened was um, she ends up running off with some other guy, doesn't even tell me about it. I, I see it on um, MySpace at the time. Mm. And Wait, did she, was he in her top six? Or well, yeah, eight probably, friends? yeah, top <laughs> six or eight friends. And, 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 and the thing is, I, like, I'm watching this, and it's, it's inevitably, you guys can all guess what happens. He ends up cheating on her or whatever. But the point mm. is, when I'm there, I come to a couple realizations. Number one, I'm not special. If I died, no one would care three weeks later. And um, it just was the most liberating feeling ever. A buddy of mine told me to read this book called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Changed my life. One. And I will tell you, I became significantly more attractive to women after I came to this realization that I do not care about the worthless opinions of people. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I started doing that, and then I, like when people had an opinion, I started saying, did you make me in better shape, introduce me to a girl that I want to be in a relationship with or make me a million dollars? No, then shut up. I don't mm -hmm. care what you have to say. I and never the, care. Yeah, Absolutely. 